Hi, I'm Federica Rosso. I am an architectural engineer and now I'm, all, I'm conducting research on the topic of urban areas and buildings and how they can improve resilience in cities. And um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Ceccarelli uh, and ELAUD for the invitation to this interview. I am currently conducting research at Sapienza University of Rome, engineering department. And um, today I would like to discuss with you uh, some of the major uh, stresses and shocks that uh, we are studying related to urban areas and to cities. In particular, we are focusing on Mediterranean cities, but I will also present uh, um, uh, the case, for example, of another big city in another continent, uh, for example, New York City. So I'm based in Rome, but I also conducted uh, periods as visiting research scholar at New York University. So I, have, I also had the experience to work as a researcher in New York City. And uh, many of the challenges that characterize Rome are also present in New York City. Uh, so today, these are my two uh, fields of um, study. And uh, um, uh, the two shocks and stresses I would like to focus on are related to one, urban, urban Thailand and heat waves. And then the second is related to flooding due to extreme precipitation events, which are increasingly common in urban areas. So less rain all along the year, but all the rain comes together in very few events that are very intense and then that cause a lot of uh, um, issues for the safety, well-being and livability of our cities. We had the experience just two days ago uh, in Palermo, for example, where uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, problems with a very heavy rain, which posed serious um, challenges to, to the city. And uh, so, first of all, Urbanit Island. Urbanit Island, what is it, Urbanit Island? Urbanit Island is a phenomenon for which temperatures in cities are higher than those in the uh, closed suburbs. And uh, this happens uh, because of, the, of many factors. All these factors are related to urban areas and to their configuration and composition. So, um, for example, the materials composing urban areas. There is uh, um, scarce green, so not many parks, not many green areas, not so much grass, not so many trees, and uh, this uh, diminish the evapotranspiration, so the natural water process in urban areas. And um, on the other hand, we have a lot of asphalt, a lot of cement, a lot of materials that absorb a lot of heat. Thus, uh, the temperatures in urban areas are, um, are um, warmer, are uh, hotter, so uh, especially um, during uh, the, the warm season. And uh, this is an issue for, um, for example, uh, uh, the summer season, the, the warm season. All of us living in Mediterranean areas have experience of very uh, hot summers. And these are due not only to urban heat island, but also to heat waves, which is another phenomena another phenomenon that is exacerbated in urban heat island. So the two phenomena are strictly related because heat waves are worst when there is also an urban heat island. And the heat waves, we, lo we all have uh, experience of uh, heat waves which stra with strange names, which are um, advised also in the news. So um, heat waves and urban heat island cause uh, uh, people to use uh, more energy. And uh, the more energy we use, the more the emissions we cause. And the more the emissions, the higher the urban heat island and the higher the temperatures. So this is a negative cycle that in some way we have to um, try to interrupt. And how to do this? 
the built environment itself can provide uh, um, a mitigation for these two phenomena. And in particular, I, I would like to present two main uh, ways, two main strategies. One is related to buildings and the other one is related to urban outdoor areas. So uh, we can fight, we can mitigate such challenges by means of a conscious design, by employing determined materials that can help tackling urbanit island and heat waves during the warm season. I am especially uh, referring to cool materials. So cool materials are materials that reflect the large part of the solar radiation, of the incoming solar radiation, instead than absorbing it. And this causes uh, these materials to maintain lower surface temperature. And thus, if these materials are employed as building envelope or as urban paving, we have a cooler building in the inside and we have a cooler outdoor temperature on the outside. Such materials are, uh, mm, we all have experienced cool materials. For example, uh, marble, when you see a, a marble material, uh, that is a cool material. So we all have experienced that if we touch a white, uh, clear, smooth surface, it is cooler than a closed asphalt or dark surface. So this is how uh, cool materials work. And uh, there are a lot of studies, and we also conducted studies on this topic, quantifying the benefits of cool materials when they are employed on building envelope, on, uh, both on the vertical envelope and the, on the horizontal envelope. And such materials can also have uh, mm, determined interesting features, such as, for example, they can be colored by means of the addition of uh, specific uh, pigments that optimize the reflectance not in the visible part of the solar spe spectrum but in the near infrared part of the solar spectrum. So by employing these materials in the urban areas both on buildings and on uh, urban pavings mm, this is an easy and not so expensive solution to tackle urban heat island and heat waves. Then the second solution is, of course, the employment of more green in cities. I am talking about green roofs, green envelopes, and uh, um, the addition of trees on the streets, uh, on permeable paving. And uh, this last solution is strictly related to the next uh, issue, next uh, stress that I'm going to talk about. And uh, this is a stress related to flooding. So to extreme rain events and uh, um, such an amount of water is not, um, is not uh, um, predicted. Uh, thus, the infrastructure system is not uh, mm, designed to receive such an amount of water. So this water remains on the top of the urban, uh, urban land, so on the streets, on the sidewalks, and uh, it constitutes runoff. And runoff is water flowing on the streets and it can be dangerous um, for people, but it also can be uh, uh, detrimental for the well-being of people using the city. So um, how can we um, fight? How, how can we help mitigating uh, um, from uh, mm, flooding events in urban areas. One of the solution is the same that we discussed a few minutes ago about urbanit island mitigation. It is the addition of green areas and uh, uh, greenery both on buildings and on streets. By, um, um, by working on the, build, on the urban surface and making it more permeable we can reduce the runoff and uh, we can thus uh, reduce the risk of inundation. Of course, all of these strategies has, have to be concertated, uh, have to be uh, designed together, because for example, as we saw, the strategy of urban greenery is effective both to tackle flooding, but also to tackle urban heat island heat waves. So there are many strategies that we as 
um, researcher in the architectural field and uh, as uh, designers and urban planner can use to mitigate the challenges characterizing urban areas. And uh, these are just a few examples. And uh, in Rome and uh, in New York, we were studying in the last years all these uh, kind of solutions. And um, in New York, for example, we were studying a lot of uh, small parks that provide uh, um, both uh, permeable paving and also comfortable places where to stay during an heat wave. And uh, all these strategies are defined as passive strategies because they are linked to the intrinsic characteristics of the built environment. So uh, conscious design, conscious design and urban planning can help mitigating and could have a tremendous potential effect in mitigating uh, such challenges for urban areas. So this is my uh, take, my view on the um, challenges, shocks and stresses um, characterizing urban areas. And this is even more true in this period where the built environment uh, uh, has become more and more important to our lives. We spend a lot of time in buildings uh, due to lockdown, so having cooler building, buildings that uh, consume less energy and uh, at the same time uh, allow improving indoor comfort is very important. At the same time, it's very important to have uh, greener space ju just outside our home, where we can go uh, even mm, very fast. So very close green areas and many green areas more green areas could be helpful also in mitigating such issues. So um, I hope this uh, interview could be uh, could offer a um, point of view, a perspective on how passive strategies and the conscious design, a conscious urban planning could help mitigating such shocks characterizing urban areas. Thank you for your attention.